We're excited to be here. Um, we got permission from the state to bring our kids, and as far as I'm concerned, we just get an extra day of practice uh, compared to the rest of the state. So, and we just love being in the gym. Uh, most of my kids are here. We got um, a number of kids that play volleyball that, that aren't here, but uh, we've got anything from freshmen to seniors. And uh, my staff's all here. Uh, I got tremendous staff. I've been coaching 15 years, and, and a lot of them have been with me the entire time. And uh, I now have some former players that are coaching with me as well. And uh, we're from small town Ohio, and I assume you know some of you guys are in similar situations. Uh, we graduate 50 to 60 kids in a class. We never have great athletes. We never get uh, transfers and, and, and that sort of thing. So you know, for us, and we're going to talk about uh, our offense today. But for us, it's all about our philosophy stems around skill development. It, you know, it's dribble, pass, and shoot. I mean, it's a simple game. We start our kids in kindergarten as our first camp. Um, this year, our K through six camp, we had 150 kids um, at our school. And my brother is the boys coach, so we were able to work that together. But um, for me, the, the enjoyable part of coaching is is watching that skill development, you know, through the years. And uh, no matter what offense you run, and if you don't have kids that can dribble, pass, and shoot, it ain't going to look good anyway. Um, but for us, you know, everything stems from there, and then our defensive philosophy. Um, Coach mentioned our newsletter, and I was actually going to show that. I've got a few over here if you want. Always looking, and when I go to clinic, for something that, that might make a difference, some little thing, and I call, it a, call them program builders. But we send our, our newsletter out um, every quarter, and it goes to every girl in grades uh, three, through tw uh, three through eight. So all our grade school kids get this. It's just kind of a promotional stuff that, that we do. Um, for our program, our gym rack clubs, which Co Coach talked about, is the other big thing that we do. Um, how many kids shot 25,000 shots or more over there? Raise your hand. It's pretty much the standard in our program anymore. Yeah, if you think you're going to have a shot to play for us, and we only have 20 kids this year, freshmen through seniors, so to get 14, that you, you know, it's pretty much the standard. You're going to figure out a way. And it teaches kids to set goals and to figure out how many shots they're going to need to take a day, quality shots. Um, we've got, we have six guns in our area. We have actually four in our gym, and two of our players actually have guns as well. So we're a big believer in the gun, and I know Coach Meyer talked about it the other day, but uh, we do a lot you know, with, with our gun work as well. Um, you know, I, Coach Meyer, I heard him speak 15 years ago down at David Lipscomb, and I heard he was out here uh, talking. It was a little intimidating, thinking we were going to come out and share some things. And we don't think we have all the answers. We're trying to learn it every day. As, as, as we're showing some things, if you have a question about, hey, what would happen if that pass gets taken away, I encourage you to ask it. If I don't know the answer, that's great, because then I need to go figure out what we need to do. But, uh, uh, but we, we've adapted to our personnel over the last 15 years. When I first started, we were all open post motion. And then we were four or five years of, of a lot of flex offense. Um, and then and what our kids are going to do now, what we do for pre-practice, and we got this from Jim Foster at Ohio State, our school ends at uh, 245. By 255, and they got to go to another building, they are on our floor ready to go. And they come out, the first 10 minutes is all um, guard forward related type things, okay? And then the last five minutes of our pre-practice is every day, game speed, our Princeton offense stuff. Running everything they can possibly think of, every counter. Um, and Jim Foster, we saw this at High State, and you know, so much of any offense is about timing and, and just, you know, comfortableness and reading each other out there. And so we know that every day, our kids are getting, you know, an extra 30, 40, 50 repetitions as hard as they can go. And I'm going to, and we'll explain some of these things, but they, they know, and, well, sometimes they know, but this group here should, should understand a lot of things. This is more of a upperclassman. But this is something that, you know, before we stretch, we've got 15 minutes on the floor. By the time they're done with these five minutes, I, I should hear a lot more talking out here. I'd be getting on them if this was a practice setting where we're calling out everything, they're communicating with each other, and at the end of those five minutes, hopefully they're working up a sweat, and then we go to our stretching after those 15 minutes. And uh, I would much rather do that. As an example, that's against our volleyball team, but you know, we're on the floor at 
at 10 till 3. I, I was in the gym the other day, and at 3.25, I noticed that they were actually starting practice. In my opinion, they wasted a half hour every day. Our kids have 10 minutes, get down the hallway. It means you can't talk to your boyfriend. You get out on the floor. Um, we're a very disciplined program. It means we never have huge numbers at our school. And I think the other programs have about 40 kids out. Well, I'm lucky to get 20 every year. I just want the best 20. The kids that want to work at it. Um, in 2000, when we won our state championship, our first one, I had two big post players, and we just ran three out, two in motion, high, low, and just jammed the ball inside and shot layups and free throws. And whenever I get two big post players like that again, we'll probably do that again. But we saw we, we, we had to make some changes. And uh, so we started investigating the Princeton offense, just talking to everybody we could talk to. The normal that I would hear is there's no way you'll get a high school girls team to run that stuff. Too complicated. You know, and we, we just love to break things down. Um, we break down everything in, in the offense daily. Um, and it, it was a great challenge. We talked to a lot of people. Um, got a lot of things from Les Kingham College, Jim Burson, and from NC State Boys program. Every time they have a game on TV, if you're interested in anything about the Princeton offense, tape their stuff. We're constantly adding things that we just see from them. Um, best part, these guys are going to be winning pretty soon. That's good. The best part that, about the Princeton offense stuff that we like, number one, the kids love it. We, we hit 200 threes last year. Um, of course, my two twins, are they here? Sitting over there, you guys raise your hand. Twins. Raise your hand. Two, they're half asleep over there. But they, they hit about 100 of them, so I'm very interested to see what, what happens this year. But uh, kids love it. We have open gyms. They run this stuff. We don't tell them. They, they just enjoy doing it. Um, teaches you to read. If you ever watch good teams run it, it's fun to watch. It's either a three or a back door most of the time. Um, a lot of fade screens. It's, it's kind of interesting. In our first couple weeks of practice, and I'm sure it's like you, we'll, we will go over with our kids how to defend pick and rolls, California screens, UCLA screens, and flex cuts. I mean, and we'll see, and we'll see the flex offense 16, 17 times this year probably. You know, so you spend a lot of time take, learning to take those things away. What I like best about this, is we're, as far as I know, we're the only team in Ohio that runs it, so it becomes a scouting problem for teams. I heard, I think Coach said something the other night, the bad thing is, is you get too good at it and all you do is see zone, offense, or zone defenses. So that's, it's nice if we can uh, knock some shots down and get people. Other thing, you'll see everybody is foul line extended and higher. Um, the question that I get most about the Princeton offense stuff, the concerns are rebounding and post play. We are, I mean, we're not big. We're not athletic. We had 28 games. We out rebounded our opponents 27 times last year. We have, it's pretty simple. If they don't rebound, they don't play. I mean, is it, with kids, they don't like to do two things. They don't like to sit on the bench and they don't like to run. I just need to find out which one they don't like to do wor the worst and then I um, you know, make that a penalty. But you know, to me, rebounding is all a mentality. So uh, uh, we, we do a lot with our rebounding stuff. Post play, we'll show you today how out of this set that we get into some uh, somewhat of our post game. There's so much to do. I've heard people talk on the Princeton offense before, and about 10 minutes into it, I close my notebook, and you just get so much stuff. I'm going to try and give you today a couple basic slides like I was teaching our first year. If it's interesting to you, great. If you want to take it from there, maybe it helps you if you play somebody that does this sort of stuff. Um, but I think you need skilled kids, and I think you need to commit to running it. We have some sets that people will ask me, hey, how do we, how do, we do that? And they'll just pick out one set, and that's fine. But I think if you want to get good at this, you've you got to run it a lot. And in, in a normal game, we'll run about 80% of our sets will be our chin offense, our Princeton stuff. About 10% will be specials where we're running to specific players, and about 10% is just open post motion to get some movement. Um, Moe's, you guys can stop them. The rest is for a second. The, the difficult thing for us that we found is in a practice setting, playing against ourselves. Because you, know, you start to know each other so well, but it also has made us, uh, it, it's, it's made us become more patient, I think, in, off, in our offense uh, when we go to practice. Our junior high, 
My seventh and eighth graders will run the about 75% open post motion. I like that in a junior high. I always feel like I can teach a kid to post up and shoot a, and throw a drop step, throw it in the hole when they get to me. I want everybody that comes to me to be able to handle the ball and to face the basket. Um, and then they'll run about 20% of our basic chin first couple of cuts just so that when they come to me, they have a little bit better understanding. And we have a very good eighth grade team this year and we're hoping to, to get them a little bit more um, a little bit more advanced. But um, I think I'm just going to get right into it and give you some ideas. Of what, I'm a whole part whole type coach. So I, I want to show you the whole, walk, walk you through it, um, and then show you how we break it down. Uh, it, and sometimes I hesitate to, to show people stuff because I, I, I'm going to give you a pattern, but the offense is all about not patterns. It's all about reading each other. Every pass that we show could get taken away. And the good thing about the Princeton offense is that all five players on the floor know that if this particular pass gets taken away, we immediately are we're flowing right into this, something else. You know, it's, it's not a recall, it's, not, it's just we know, our kids know that when you take something away, without making a call or anything, we know what we're going to. So what we, we set up, and my numbers are a little screwed up, you know, your, your big man's probably your five, and for whatever reason, 15 years ago, my big man was my four. So my, my, our post player is going to start on an elbow, right up, uh, and we call her our four. Your guards are pretty much interchangeable, and sometimes we'll stick a guard here also if their answer to our Princeton offense is to play their post player defensively back there. But this is our one. Our two for our number system, our threes on our left side, and our fives up here, who's the person that takes the ball out of bounds for us. Leah Hosteller, the twin that didn't work out this morning, she was our five, because this, this person gets a lot of three-point shots. I don't know, she, she hit nine and one half for us last year. She felt sorry for the team and only hit one in the second half then. But uh, uh, this is a great spot. I like to have a guard here. Taking the ball out of bounds gives me a second point guard in the backcourt against pressure and it's a great shooting spot, okay? But our, our guards are 12 to 15 feet apart up top here, and I always tell my wing players, I want them top of the key extended or higher. Actually, foul line would be great, but I know if I tell them top of the key, we'll probably end up at about the free throw line, okay? And we're on the sideline, we've got all that room to work down below. The basic, and we can throw to any of these people, but the basic chin set starts with a reversal here. And I'll try and give you little things, but understand when we coach this, every little thing for us is huge. How she gets open, what she does after a, cat, after a pass, we specifically work on every footwork part of this. So what happens is my point guard will bounce up and down and get, and get ready to explode on a pass to, to, to Lindsay. Lindsay's getting open on the wing, and obviously if that's taken away, Princeton rules are one dribble and a whip backdoor pass. You know, I coach, or my coach in high school was Charlie Huggins, Bobby Huggins' dad, and Charlie was about as Mr. Fundamental as you can probably imagine, and he would never, ever would have allowed us to do a one-hand whip pass. It had always been two-hand, but the, the philosophy behind the, the, the Princeton stuff, if you ever hear Kirill talk, if, if, if this defender's guarding me, and I, take, and I take a dribble, and I do this, from a defensive standpoint, they're going to know I'm passing the basketball. We spent a lot of time on just one hand, both, and throwing that whip pass and getting that kind of a twist, getting that ball to come up. And we'll show you how we do that in a little bit. But Lindsay catches the ball on the wing. We immediately go with a hard cut here. And I want a person here who's going to set a good solid screen. Gabby can go on either side. And we get this pass you know, quite often, okay? <clears throat> Especially early in the game. We call that our sinker cut. Now, you're going to hear a lot of fishing terms today because we stole all this stuff from Muskingum College and they're the Muskingum Muskies, which is a fish, and everything they do is fish related. So you're going to hear a lot of fishing stuff. So, so that's our sinker cut, okay? And we're looking to come off of that. If, you, if this was a post-up type player, she could stay in that post, but she's, she comes through. We then run our circle screen, and it's so important your post player. The key to this when we're not getting this shot right here that I'm going to show you in a second, I know it's because my post player has gotten sloppy and does not run the circle. So we run the circle, we jam left foot on the left side. Now if I'm Krista's defender, 
If I'm a good defensive team, I probably jump to the basketball and I'm in this position right here. So now we head hunt. And if we hit 200 threes last year, that was probably 80 or 90 of them. The problem with this is we get, we get open too much because it's always there. You know, and sometimes we just need to make an extra pass in our offense besides just one reversal. But we get that constantly, so it's nice if you got a shooter in that spot. That's our shuffle cut, okay? Now, a couple things. Obviously, if, if Krista's man starts to cheat, she always slips and calls out slip. Rachel's man starts to cheat. She calls out slip, shows her hand, and Lindsay throws her a pass cut into the basket. Okay, it's all about reading. This is a basic pattern. Krista catches the ball up top. Four things she can do. Let that three fly. Okay? Good thing. And I, people say, well, your post player is so far away from the hoop, she can't. Re this is the best rebounding position I can imagine right here. She can dead sprint, backside glass every time, and if she doesn't, then we get someone else that will. But Rachel's going to do that every time this year. Okay, so Chris has got, got the shot. She's got a one dribble layup. If her man is cheating and, and coming over the screen hard, Defender on Lydia, has got to make a decision. She stays out, Krista goes and lays it in. So I like this, it's a clear out. Next thing Krista can do is penetrate, we get help, we kick, and we fire that one up. Got plenty of backside rebounding. We always want to have two people backside glass every time. Okay, one of my favorite is we get this a lot. Lydia's being defended here. Krista reads it, she takes one dribble with Lydia, and we get a backdoor pass there. Especially if you got a shooter right here. And so we get that a lot. The other thing, the final thing, Krista penetrates and pitches. And we're going to show you, we get into bobber later, but for now we're just going to get into, we can go a hard dribble, speed dribble high. We whip it, we call it a ping ping pass, and away we go. And we're right into our, just keep running through that. <laughs> Lord Coach Meyer talked about reversals last night. Well, Princeton offense is all about reversals. Hard dribble high. Good. Hold up. These guys do a nice job. They're calling out screens, they're talking to each other, and, and that's the basic. Um, and we'll show you counters to once again take away every, these things. Now, what we do every day, I've got a list of about 75 things that happen in the Princeton offense from as basic as the first cut. And so I have a checklist, and the things that we do the most, you know, make sure we're, we're catching every week. And then there's things that we don't do as much, but I want to make sure that we are, we're doing breakdown drills for, and I'm going to show you a couple of those right now. But you know, this, the summer for summer league, for example, we, we go on Tuesday and Thursdays. We drive to Canton. Our kids always meet an hour before they leave, and they spend that entire hour doing breakdown drills for the chin offense. I mean, if you want to get good at something, you have to do it a lot. So set up our sinker cut breakdown drill. So we need a, a point guard, a coach, and an offensive defense on this wing over here. <clears throat> offensive defense here, you know, two ways that we get open on this reversal is, is just taking our man down and stepping out. The second way is if I just want to get the ball to this wing, then we'll teach our kids to actually step across and post up here on the wing, ask for it, catch it, and work on their footwork. They need an attack step so that they can get their man off of them. And then we throw a two-handed, you know, ball fake low, two-handed whip pass right over the top. And what, what we really encourage our kids to do, you got all this room right here, and that's attack the baseline. So we work hard on take the ball to the basket, and we also work on a step back shot right here, okay? So all we're doing right now is teaching the kids to, to read up top there, our post player to actually head hunt, and make a pass over top. A lot of talk. You see our point guard up there? They, they, de they deliver that pass and they're bouncing on their toes, looking, looking, looking. It's all about timing in an offense, working together. It's not about running a pattern, it's about timing. If our cutter sees we have attack down here, then we automatically just hold. Good. If our coach plays on the high side, they know they know just to read, take what the defense gives them. I'd rather if they if, if they're late getting the ball there, I don't want them to throw it. Just what Lindsay did right there, and that's attack.
Okay, let's go to our, uh, our shuffle cut. Coach and player line, just switch up there. Okay, now what I'm going to... Normally what we would do is have everybody do... Certain, I've told these kids just to go ahead and do any of the three things. You know, take the three, go shoot a layup, or go shoot a one dribble drive pull up jumper. Okay, so they'll just mix it up. And, uh, and sometimes too what we would do is tell our post player once in a while to slip so we can throw that pass to our, our post player slip into the basket. Um, yeah, go ahead. And a lot of times we, we would actually put uh, defense on this as well and we'll play three on three live um, after about the first day or two of the season. It is about footwork. We need to make sure we jam left foot on that left elbow, get to that spot. That's funny, at home they're all ready to jack the three. I don't think anybody wants to shoot that first one here. And if you can follow that footwork, even my, my assistant coach there, it's just a, tough, it's a difficult screen to handle. Um, you know, a good defensive team is going, going to jump to the basketball which lends right into this screen. Okay, put a, uh, stay in those lines and put an additional line on that wing over there. This is that, that other option off the shuffle cut, and that's um, seeing that our, my teammates closely guarded, and we're looking to go back door on the other side, one-handed whip pass. Okay. I want those kids, the biggest term that I use the entire season is cut credibly. I mean, we cut and we cut hard. One dribble at you is an automatic like hitting you in the head with a hammer, you go back door. If somebody dribbles at you in the Princeton offense, you are going back door. If you, if you, Lindsay's doing a nice job over there. You want to bounce up and down. You want to show your hands. Defense relaxes and all of a sudden you have your back door cut. Throw that pass hard, throw it as hard as you can. Okay, nice job. Uh, give me uh, five, my five out there set up in the chin offense. Now I'm gonna show you one way. Now there's two parts of, there's actually a chin series, which is what we're running here, and chin low, which is an entire another series where my post player actually starts low. And we're, we're also running that now. And because uh, we actually feel we got a couple post players now we can throw it into and, and get some things done. Um, but we're not going to show that today. That's a whole other ball game. But what we will show is how we get into, how we get the ball into our post, off the chin offense. And to me, we've had games that have been on the line. And when we're patient enough to get to this set that I'm going to show you, and we hit the big shot, and it's been a big, a big set for us. So just go get, a, uh, get it all the way through to a reversal, and then your post player step up. Where, where we were, go ahead, when we were just reversing and dribbling high, a lot of times what we'll do is on an automatic reversal pitch, my post player steps right to there. Okay, hold up right there. Okay, now we're in our bobber set. Okay, another fishing term. We got two people high, top key extended. The other person is out on the, on, on the sideline. <clears throat> now Rachel, she can choose to dribble in either way, okay? If she's smart, she can look at someone who's closely guarded. If they're laying off Lydia, and this person's right here defending, that's a, that's a done deal, one dribble back to her layup, okay? Or if you see somebody that's really slow or bad defender, and you can dribble at them and send them back door. Okay. Now I'm going to show you two things. One, we I'll show you the here's the first set as we go dribble back door into what we call zipper, and you'll see why. Okay. So we go dribble back door. If she's not open, stop right there. If she's open, we shoot a layup. If she's not open, we don't go all the way to the rim like motion offense. I immediately see that she's picked it up, so I'm going to change direction right here. Go ahead, pitch as Gabby has stepped up there. Rachel's going to take her man away. 
and we get a big little screen, which is, I think, the best ones, especially if we get a switch. Okay. Now we can, if they don't do a good job, we just throw it to her for layup or let her. We got a direct entry into the post. Okay. If that's not there, we go reversal, and we we call it bingo. If, if, if anybody on the floor feels we have a lob opportunity from the top. She should be yelling bingo, she should, she should, anybody on the bench. But the ideal, we want to pose first, chest to the ball, and then look for our, our high-low. Okay, ball's there. If for some reason, and these two are interchanging and just kind of keeping people occupied in the meantime. That's not there, we go, now if Chris is guarded, what are we going to do? We're going to go one dribble back door and shoot a layup. Okay, but if she's not, we pitch. We come down for a fake screen, boom, and we, we split two defenders, and right there, we got a pass for a layup. Screen, 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 slip is our terminology. That's not there, we get the ball back out to Rachel, and we're in bobber again, okay? That's our bobber to zipper, okay? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the other one right away. If we don't wanna go back door, we might wanna go with a handoff, and what, I'm only going to give you a few flare screen things today, but so much of the uh, Princeton offense, if you watch it, is all about flare screens. Once again, you spend time with your coaches, and you, you, do, you teach kids how to defend flex and, and pick and rolls, and you see, you, I wonder how many of you have ever taught your kids how to defend a flare screen, because, I mean, we've spent very little time. No one, no one defends flare screens. We get it. So we go hand off. Okay, stop right there. For Gabby's first job, is to turn the corner because this handoff is just like a screen. And maybe there's a big post player sitting right here playing off of her. She can attack, stutter, and go to the basket. Okay. On this side, top person is always the shooter. Bottom person is always the flare screen. So we're standing judiciously over here. That's what we call it. We're standing judiciously. As soon as that handoff happens, Krista takes her man one step inside of the three at the most. So I'm guarding Krista. I've stepped in here, Gabby's coming, we got the flare screen, and you have a shot. If you want it, that will be there most of the time. <clears throat> what I like best is the re-screen, and that is we go pitch. My post player who handed off immediately runs the circle back, and my handoff person gets a shot, and that's maybe my favorite. So if Rachel's smart, and she saw that Gabby just knocked down Three threes in a row. She better be smart enough. Hand off to Gabby. Because I know I'm getting, with all that action that's going to take place, she's going to get a wide open shot at the top. Go ahead and just run that. <clears throat> okay, go 5 on 0 and just run your chin to bobber. Let's go, um, well, now that you've seen the hole, now let's set up our bobber back door. So give me a line up top and a line on the wing. <clears throat> I got, uh, I'll put my coach out here today, a lot of times we'll put a, a, um, an actual defender there. And, uh, and I'll, I'll normally put a defender on the post as well, just to give us a game situation. But if, if Lindsay's going back door, come right here Lindsay, if she's going back door, and I'm right here. Most kids would think that, that she's not open. She's, a, she's definitely open right now. If that pass is right here. Sorry. By the back foot is where we want to throw that pass. Okay, and, and a lot of the, what I like now, and, and the twins were so good at it, um, it, is it's just learning to play, you know, if she doesn't think she's open and she half-heartedly cuts, that ball's going out of bounds. So she has to cut credible every time because this is definitely open, okay? And so we want our kids to understand that because it's all about working together. 
Yeah, play defense there, Coos. So you see I got my post players up top there working on bobber passes. Okay. And we see a lot of those early. I want them to throw it as hard as they can and us to cut as hard as we can. Now, hold up. What they've done a terrible job of is you have to cut above the block. Okay, you, you have to make a cut above the block. Go ahead. And I would just soon spend time on my left hand, about three to one compared to our right hand. <clears throat> last year I think we beat three teams during our season that I felt were better than us. All city teams, athletic and the regionals, we played a team called Afrocentric, um, pretty much a parochial school from inner city Columbus that just recruited the best in Columbus, all athletes. and. We, it tied at halftime, we hit nine threes in the third quarter, and then they had to come get us. And then it was just layup after layup after layup. So if you can get kids, if you can get teams to have to come get you. You know, what we want to, we love those teams that want to come, come play us, because um, then eyes should light up and we're looking to go one dribble back door. Okay, hold up. Let's go, let's, let's set up our three on three. Give me white on defense. Let's just go white on defense. We'll just let you guys play live. <clears throat> Over here, got two wings. White's gonna just, uh, you guys can just keep working it on defense. And to, we like to break, I don't care what you're running, flex, whatever. If you just need to make sure, we think we just, you just need to break it down. Three on O, five on O, stuff like we did before practice there or whatever. But then put them in a scenario here where you need to score you know, off of a three-on-three -three set. We're in our bobber, our post player has it up top, and let's play from here. Okay. Back doors there. Okay. We like to bounce pass, but I tell my post players, read that. If, if they have taken away the bounce pass and you can throw it right over the top, we just want to score, we don't care how. Finally learned how to teach kids to throw a lob pass. A Kent State coach. We go, it's a volleyball set. We go immediately to the forehead and right from there, if we're doing it right. Play it live. You should attack baseline there, Layla. Big little switch. Teams got to decide what they want to do in that situation. You know, if they're going to go big little switch, then we should should be able to get the ball to our post player. <laughs> then we got the bingo call. I like that. If you can get something that you don't have to yell, look for the lob, you know, high, low. Give yourselves, a, kids, a, a one word, one word that, that signifies what we're looking for, and for us it's bingo. Okay, get in your 510, Red. Now, I'm going to give you some counters. <clears throat> Let's say, like for example, if we're going to defend the flex, and I know you guys did some flex talk yesterday, one thing we would try and do is take away the guard-to-guard -guard reversal. And so let's say a team scouts us and say, say, well, you guys just do this every time. We're not going to let you have this, okay? So then we're, we go immediately into what we call our rod series, like a fishing rod, okay? So Gabby, my point guard, she can either wave Krista through or Krista goes back door, I gotta lay up fine, but let's say she doesn't have that and she goes through. My post player sees that, it's not a call, she just sees that our five's gone through so she immediately takes her man down, middle of the rim here, steps up and we look for a pass away from the defense right here. Okay, stop right there. 
Now there's three things Gabby can do. I'm going to give you one today. Okay? She could go what we call under, rod under, which is throw it there, take her man, boom, and get an explosion right here. Nobody back here. Nice backdoor pass by her post player. She could go rod over, which is going over the ball, come get, set a screen for Lindsay. She goes for a handoff, boom, I go for a slip, and Rachel can hit either one of us. Okay? That's our rod over. The one I'm going to show you today is one of my favorite. Lana, our point guard from last year, made her bread and butter right here. And that is rod away. And that is we come across. Set, hold up. Gabby set a screen for Lydia. And, and, and Princeton offense, if you'll read those notes, isn't about screening. It's about screening and reading. So what we're doing is we're coming up and we're getting a quick one-two hop and we are exploding back door. And we get, these kids have done a nice job. We, we made, we've made a lot of, we work on this pass and a breakdown drill. Go ahead, Lydia. Boom, screen. And we get a quick backdoor cut there. Okay. If that's not there, let you go through. My point guard, footwork. She set the screen. She sets right here. And we go three-point shot. I sit down. If I got it, great. Rebounders are over there. If not, while I'm sitting, Rachel's coming, pick and roll. She needs to do a good job. We want our point guards to be able to come right to the middle here, pull up jumper. Rachel can roll, or I got a down screen on the mid wing for a shot right there. Okay, go ahead and run through that. That's, that's our rod. Anytime we wave through up top, we're in our rod series, just automatically. Jump. Jay, how much time we have? Go ahead, guys. Run again. Huh? Under 10. Under 10. Did, you to, did you want to do invert? Okay. Okay. Um, White, go ahead and get on defense there. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to, we call it invert. What you, what you want to try and do once in a while is get their defenders to get in a different position, okay? So, because if, if Gabby's man here is always the one getting blasted on this sinker cut, sooner or later she's just going to work real hard and just cheat back here. So we want to get somebody different. So we go, we invert, we go with a handoff. They interchange. I whip it, and now all of a sudden I've stuck a new kid that's going to get blasted on that first screen. So with a simple handoff, we've, com we've just inverted our players, and that's a nice, easy thing to do. And what my point guard last year was so good at is about half the time she'd come right to here on an invert, show it, hide the ball, and take off and go lay it in. So we work on that fake handoff as well. But go ahead, go invert. Yeah. Hold up. Does anybody have a question for now, anything? I might just let them play a little bit and see what how ugly it looks. Okay. Okay, again. White, you guys can take away anything that you want. I always tell kids on out of bounds play, our best play is no play. I mean, the best thing you can do is not have a play. And so the same thing, you know, once they start to play and we've given them something, all I want them to do is figure out a way to score. And so constantly looking to attack the baseline, reading each other, you know, give them some basic stuff. Um, you know, we've got entries for if we threw the ball to the right side, first of all. We've got entries if we threw the ball to the post player to start with, and it automatically gets us into something. But you know, rather than just cloud the issue, we'll just try and keep things. Go ahead and run another one. Anything you want, just go. Through. Okay. 
passed up a shot. Lindsay will never pass up a shot. Okay, some of them will, but she'll never pass up a shot. There was an invert right into a rod. Nice back door. I'm going to show you a special, we run out of this, that for Lana, if the game was on the line last year, if the game was on the line, I would run one of two things, and I'm going to give those two things to you, okay? The first one is, we'll call it real, because we go rod to real, okay? <clears throat> because I wanted the ball back in my, if you, one of the things when I first looked at this, I said, well, my point guard doesn't get the ball back for two or three or four passes, and I don't like that if my best player is my point guard. So this particular set gets the ball back in my point guard's hand on the second pass where she's best, okay? So we go, we wave through our rod entry. Now my point guard, we've got her dribble. Now two things, one, it's a call, we call it real, but, my, but we don't have to call it because if my point guard does this and looks at Rachel and doesn't deliver the pass but just goes to a spin dribble, everybody on the floor knows we're in real. Okay, a lot of, uh, uh, Layla turns and dribbles at uh, Lydia. The back door's open, we shoot a layup. But if not, we pitch to Krista. We jam to the elbow in our shuffle cut. Now stop right there. Now I got my best player, has the ball, game on the line. Three, penetrate, pull up, which is what she was best at, or a kick to my shooter. Okay, just run through that. Layla, hit a shot. You got real. Okay, that's real, and that's a way to get the ball back in your point guard's your hands on the second one. Okay, the other one, Layla, get over here, is what we call sink or stay. We're running a sink or cut, but we're going to stay. And what we do here is we're going to hand off to a guard who can post up. Okay, Lindsay's got our bench press record at 185, so we like to get her in the post up against another guard, okay? So we go, we go hand off to her. Those guys interchange because we're inverting. We pitch, and now, hold up. Normally, Lindsay is going to go sink or cut on that pass. So as soon as Lydia gets it, she has ball faked. So now we come sink or cut. Rachel steps high. Layla stays wide. We do a bounce pass to Rachel. One step, front pivot, inside. And we got that a couple times in the state championship game. Run, run that. Good. The nice thing is you can, you can call that. We, we just do this. We have about 55 hand signals. We just do that. But and if, if Layla wanted to do run sink or stay, that particular set for Lydia, all she'd have to do is come over here. Krista could give her a screen. We go right. We interchange. And away we go. Okay. Any questions? Anything that? I mean, my phone number's on there. If if anybody would would want to call or anything, you're more than welcome to. Yes, Coach. Field goal percentage, my stat man. From the three, what were we? What were we from the three? 40, 40%. Then from, uh, what were we overall? Wasn't it overall, weren't we above 50 or not? No? Okay. I mean, yes? What do you do if somebody jumps your ball screens or captures your ball Good question. We, 
going to the regionals, we played that very athletic team, and, and we heard through the grapevine that that was, because we do a ton of handoffs, okay, is they're just going to come trap us. So about the first two possessions that we went handoffs, I told my point guard <clears throat> to go fakes, okay? So if my point guard, why don't you go over here, Layla, is coming for a handoff, okay? And they're going to get ready to trap, okay? One of two things. You, we, we, we run him. Lana was so good. She would just split this and go, and go lay that thing in. Um, if, if they're going to come trap, the other thing that I would tell our kids to do is keep your dribble, and we're looking to go right back to the person to hand it off to them. Is kind of our rule to split that trap. Uh, but it, we got him. We got him early on fake handoffs for layups twice, and it seemed that that took care of things for us. Um, with our with our bobber set, when we go handoffs. We've just never seen a team do that because most people's answer to us is to take their post player and sit them back in the key. And then what we did the last two years at state tournament is we put Lindsay a little bit in the post. And when we got into bobber set, we just let her shoot the three. And then they'd have to come out. And then, so if you, and hopefully we have a couple post players that might be able to, if you watch the good Princeton teams, they have post players who stand out there and, and let her fly. And so we're, we're trying to get to that point where we got some post players that can shoot that ball. But that's a good question. Uh, that's what we do too is we like to go trap any handoffs. Any other questions? We, we have run it already and it's amazing how many times we get the shot up top. But what we like to run is Coach Myers uh, loop entry stuff. Uh, we, we stole that a couple years ago and run a lot of that. Um, but we, we still run four out, one in concepts. Um, we put our post player butt to baseline down there on, on either side. Uh, so we run a little bit different stuff, but there's times when we're just standing too much in our zone offense and we'll just say, chin it up and let's go do that. That sink or stay, that play for the post player, or, or hand off to the guard, amazingly we actually got that quite often against the zone. Yes? That's a great point. We, we call it our fly. Our transition, our, our post player runs to the ball side block. So let's say ball's coming up this sideline. Our post player, they have a bad habit sometimes of stopping in our chin spot. You know, we want them to run. If the ball, if the ball is on this side of the floor, you know, we've got our post players this to the block and here. And now what ideally what we would have is if we're in our fly, we're running the floor, on any type of reversal to the other side, whether from Lindsay on a skip or from Layla, my post player, one of two things. If she feels she's got post up opportunity, she stays in there. But if you can imagine in transition, if you can get your post player also just to come up, you talked about in your shuffle stuff last night, screening the passer, you know, it's almost the same thing because it's such a quick reversal. She just steps right up and we're right into her. So I, a number of people have talked about Prince offense is a nice thing to get right into to your uh, chin offense. And the other thing my brother runs, he's a boys coach at my school, is uh, he runs a lot of low, chin low, and this is ideal off of your transition, which is a whole other story, but uh, uh, you can get into it right off your secondary break. <laughs>